I moved into a new apartment three months ago, hoping for a fresh start after a tough breakup. There was a cozy place tucked away on the third floor of an old building. The rent was suspiciously low, but I figured it was due to the age of the building and the weird layout of my unit. For the first few weeks, everything was fine. The apartment had character, creaky floors, vintage fixtures, and a cloth of bathtub I absolutely adored. I spent my days at work and my evenings binge watching Netflix or reading. One night, as I was settling into bed, I heard a faint whisper. It sounded like someone saying my name. I brushed it off, thinking it was my mind playing tricks on me. But the whispers became more frequent and distinct over the next few days. They were always just on the edge of my hearing, enough to make me question my sanity. A couple of weeks later, I started finding objects in places I hadn't left them. My keys ended up in the refrigerator, books rearranged themselves, and once, my TV remote was in the bathroom sink. I was alone, so I couldn't blame a roommate or a pet. I mentioned the odd occurrences to my neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, an elderly woman who'd lived in the building for decades. Her eyes widened when I described the whispers in the moving objects. Oh dear, you've met Matilda, she said, her voice trembling slightly. Matilda, I asked, feeling a chill run down my spine. Matilda was a young woman who lived in your apartment during the 1940s. She was troubled. They say she never left. Great, my apartment was haunted by a ghost with boundary issues. Mrs. Thompson suggested I try talking to Matilda, setting boundaries with her. I felt ridiculous, but I did it anyway. Matilda, I said aloud one evening, I'm okay with sharing the apartment, but please stop moving my stuff and whispering my name. It's creepy, surprisingly, the disturbances decreased. I still heard occasional whispers and found misplaced objects, but it was less frequent. Matilda seemed to respect my boundaries. One night, I decided to try communicating with her more directly. I set up a small table with a candle, a piece of paper, and a pen. If you're here, Matilda, I said, can you write something? I left the room, feeling like an idiot. When I returned, my heart skipped a beat. The candle had blown out, and there was a single word scrawled on the paper, help. I didn't know what to do. How do you help a ghost? I spent hours researching Matilda's life and discovered she had died under mysterious circumstances. Some believed she was murdered, others thought she took her own life. Her spirit, it seemed, was trapped, unable to move on. Determined to help, I reached out to a local paranormal investigator, a kind but eccentric man named Richard. He conducted a seance and communicated with Matilda. It turned out she had unfinished business. She wanted her death to be acknowledged and her memory honored. Richard suggested a small memorial service in the apartment. I invited Mrs. Thompson and a few other tenants. We lit candles, shared what we knew about Matilda, and said a few words in her honor. Since that night, the disturbances have ceased. Matilda, it seems, found peace. I still live in the apartment, which no longer feels eerie. Instead, it feels like a place where Matilda finally found her rest. Every so often, I light a candle and think of her, the ghostly roommate who just needed a little help moving on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends.